Okay, so I just want to do a quick video here to give you some steps to creating a safe place for your dog to hang out. Um, first of all, if your dog already has a space that they've chosen that they go to regularly, um, you're halfway there. So use that space if it works, if it's far enough from uh, where you entertain your guests that your dog won't be disturbed by the guests, use that space. If your dog likes to go to a crate, uh, if that's their safe space, that's even better because you can just take the crate and move it so it's far enough uh, from the room where the guests are in that it's not, again, gonna impact your dog. Um, so um, even if uh, with both those uh, spaces, if you still wanna go ahead and condition them the way I'm going to be describing, nothing wrong with going ahead and doing that. You might have to do it with the crate because you've moved the crate to a new location. That's a, that's a change for your dog. So you want the dog to really want to go to the room that you're going to choose. So we're going to uh, condition them to feel really good about it. So the first thing to do is make it comfortable. Uh, if your dog has any blankets, beds, mats that they like to lie down on, um, put those in the room, all right? And the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, use food, high value, and we're going to use a variety so your dog doesn't expect the same thing every time because new, uh, new treats are really impactful for dogs. So we wanna use the food, but we want to use it in uh, the correct um, way so that this actually works. So what we are looking for here is for the dog's um, entrance into the room to predict good stuff. So your dogs, uh, we want your dog to think, oh my gosh, every time I go to this room, oh, I get a fantastic treat. I get a topo. I can you know, lie down, work, work our way at it for some time. Um, I love going to this room because it predicts, me going into that room predicts good stuff. Um, so if you're taking your dog to the room, you don't wanna have that high value food in your hand because the dog's looking at that high value food and they go, wow, that's really cool. There's that really great food I want. But now that I see that in your hand, I know I have to go to that room. So it's backwards. Um, we want the room to predict great stuff not the food to predict the, not the great stuff to predict the room. So what you wanna do is um, take the food when, when your dog's not around. So say your dog is in another part of the house sleeping or hanging out with somebody, or they're out for a walk, or they're out in the backyard, you know, doing a pee. Take the food, put it in the room um, or the crate, and just uh, close it up and walk away. So the dog has no idea that you've just done that and then take the dog to the room or the crate and you open the door and the dog goes, oh my God, there's that great stuff. Oh, wow, what a surprise. I like coming here because there's a cool surprise. All right. Now you want to build up a little bit of duration, obviously for your dog staying there. Um, and so some dogs might not be used to being on their own in the house for any period of time. They might not be used to being in that specific space. Um, if your dog has separation anxiety or isolation distress in general, don't do this. This is not going to help your dog at all. It's just going to stress them out. Um, but if it's just something they're not used to, then you can you can work at it. So, you know, if you have a dog who really doesn't know they're supposed to be there on their own, maybe the first few times you can stay there with them for a minute or two while they're, you know, eating their stuff and not a problem. But eventually you have to get out of the room. So... Um, you have to work at where the dog can be successful. So maybe, you know, for your dog, new room, new, new space, um, the best that they can tolerate is that you walk out the door, close the door and walk right back in again. And that's fine. Um, that's where they can start. Uh, eventually you just start to um, work for more and more duration in small increments. So maybe you work up to walking out, counting to 10 or 15 and coming back into the room. You wanna track it a little bit. So the next time you come, you know, well, we got to 15. So maybe I can start at 10 and, and work our way out. So you just start to add, um, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. If at any point the dog gets distressed, you know you have to go back to a shorter time. And, you know, maybe once you can get to a minute or so, um, which would be great, then you can start to um, 
uh, vary the uh, amount of time you're out of the room. So you randomize it a little bit. So you're not always pushing the dog for more and more time. So maybe you go out for five seconds, come back. Next time you go out for 20 seconds and come back and then 10 seconds and come back and 30 seconds and come back. So um, those short breaks uh, reinforce your dog a little bit and, and take the pressure off always, you know, longer and longer. Um, so, um, you just work away at it. You don't have to do this, um, you know, all day long. You do, at, do it once or twice a day. Um, and as I said, you know, if your dog has isolation distress, don't do it. And just gradually, you know, try and increase the time. You may have a dog who just thinks that's great, you know, playing with their food dispensing toy in the room. They don't care, which is fantastic. Um, if uh, you try this for you know a week or two and you find that your dog just can't deal with it at all, um, as I said in the video, it's not the end of the world. You just need to find somebody who's willing to hang out in the room with your dog while you are out there entertaining your guests. So hopefully you have um, kids who are happy to play computer games in that room, or maybe you've got you know a dog sitter, dog walker who will come in and spend the time. So it's not the end of the world if this doesn't work. So if you try this and you get bogged down or you get confused or you're not sure what to do next and you don't think it's working, um, please just um, send me a message in the Facebook business page. Um, I would be happy to uh, talk to you and help you through it and maybe problem solve for you. I want this to work for people because it works for us here and it's a, it's a great idea. So um, any problems, um, let me know. If it's working, let me know too. Sometimes I really like to know what if these things actually work after I put the videos out. Okay, take care.